right. So tonight we're going to go over uh, working with loft, uh, the loft tool and creating the lofted bottle. Now, like I said, for the example, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and I'll switch over here so we can see the actual fusion example. You have a few requirements. Sorry, I should have this open already. I'm not sure why that is clear. Ah. So a few requirements in this. Yeah, that's fine. Getting diff. Um, in that it has to at least be two components. So that will be your bottle and your cap. You're using a loft command, which as I scroll up to the option, loft. As you can see here, what the description is, it creates a transitional shape between two or more sketch profiles on a, or planner faces. We're gonna explain what that actually means in a few. But essentially what a loft does, think of a fit point spline in that you are creating points and it will create a line, a curved line based on those points. The difference here being, instead of points, you are creating entire profiles. And the loft will create basically a 360 series of fit point splines to create a body around those profiles. But the cool thing is, is those profiles don't have to be the same. It's not just a single point. They can be like, rectangular in the middle or octagonal, whatever. Sure, that's an octagon. And what will happen is the design or the uh, law tool will translate between those. So you'll end up with something that starts as a circle and ends up with square points and then keeps going down further and actually has more, much more aggressive bends in it. Now, of course, you can add your fillets and stuff like that to add a smoother transition. And you're also, of course, going to have a lot more awkward problems with some of these, which we'll get into. But that's essentially how a loft tool works. Now, we're going to use a few different types of other examples in that what you're also going to have to add is, let me hide the cap here, it will have to have threads. So both threads on the inside of the bottle, or sorry, the outside of the bottle and inside of the cap. And of course, it will need a joint between those. And let me open up joint tool here. And we're going to be using a cylindrical tool now, or joint rather. Now, this will only show one, uh, one motion each. It won't show both unless I actually grab it and move it myself. But one is the rotation, so you can, of course, set limits on that, but it also will create a linear motion. So cylindrical is it will rotate and move, so, you know, like you're twisting off a cap. Novel. Um, now, of course, like we've done before, you ground one of the objects, and then you can click and drag and move the other one all around. Snazzy. Now, I'm going to show you how to make, like, some of the features here, like I've made this, the features here in this cap that somewhat better replicate all the, the um, texturing on the cap there. You're also going to be required to add a handle to this, regardless of what your original bottle is, add a handle to it. And we're gonna go over a couple of different ways of working with handles that are very similar tools. Now, this handle is actually created with a loft as well. It goes from this ovoid shape down to a rectangle, and you can see how the shape transitions between the two. You can do all kinds of fun stuff with this. It's actually a pretty neat tool. The other, you also have other options. You have simple ones, like a pipe tool that is just a the same profile all the way through, designed around either the default settings are either circular, rec, or, uh, square, or triangular. Or you can create a sweep. Now, the difference on all of these is these all work off of essentially the same path. This line here is would be perpendicular to your to your object. So looking straight on in your bottle, you would have a line drawn somewhere on the side that would be your handle. That's what you want the handle 
uh, a path for, of your handle to look like. So it's basically a line drawn straight in the center of the uh, curvature of your handle. From there, the pipe tool, and I'll show you the drop down here, creates a solid around a path. Like I said, you open that up and actually I should have just opened the uh, one that I already had existing so I don't mess that all up. Let me go back and edit feature. It's always circular, but you can set the diameter and you can even taper it as well as if you really want to make it hollow. It's a pipe tool, it makes a pipe. Um, and if it's hollow, you also have to set the wall thickness. But for our for our needs, just leave it as solid. So basically it just creates it creates its own circle and it, and it drags that circle along a path. The other option is a sweep in that it uses a path, but it also uses a single profile. So you could make, in this case, this ovoid shape. And I even added like a little feature on the end of that. And it takes that single ovoid shape and drags it all the way along the path. The thing is, is with that sweep, it will distort the shape a bit. Sometimes depends on how depends on how aggressive your path is and such. But as you can see, I added that little that little feature in there, and it pulled that feature all the way along into the path. It's a neat feature. It's a neat way of working. The final version is a loft, which is the same thing in this case, only instead of one path or um, instead of one profile, you've created two profile. Like I said, a loft creates a transitional surface between two or more. Uh, profile. So I've got the same profile that I used when I drew up the sweep, and I added another, this rectangle, to show how it can transition between the two. And that little notch got real weird. <laughs> it actually kind of morphed from the bottom to the top. So different ways of playing. But Main thing, like I said, is we are trying to create a recreate a bottle, and in this case, uh, this is when I used this uh, uh, Murphy's oil soap bottle. Now, the thing about this is, as you'll find out when we're modeling, sometimes you have to break up the loft into and do separate loft operations and then join them all together. Because when you try to do this all in one go, it just goes completely haywire. So we're going to go over different ways of how to actually make that work. All right. So let's start a new one here and we'll start to, and we'll start to go over how this stuff actually works. So in a loft, in creating a loft, where's the loft tool? I always forget. Obviously, you need two or more profiles. Now let me close this and show you on the whiteboard what we're really going to be doing here. Get a little recursion of the screen going there. <laughs> So how a loft works in this case that we're working, you're going to create a series of profiles based off of the major shape changes of your bottle. So obviously, first, you're going to need to take a measurement of how tall is it. And in this case, you can either leave the cap on or omit it because we're going to be working with actually this last section is going to be a straight extrusion to ensure that it's a cylinder so we can add the threads to it. So. If you have a bottle you're measuring off of, or you're going to create your own kind of roughly based on one, same thing. But we're wanting to take a measurement from the bottom, first to the top of what we're going to be using, and also increments in between. So the major thing here, and also me trying not to pour this out as I uh, make measurements, is figuring out how tall is this. And I've got the metric side on the wrong side, so I'm not seeing it. So, like I said, we're going to kind of fudge some numbers just for um, functional sake. So it looks like overall, from the bottom to the first ridge of where the thread, the neck of this bottle is, is 190 millimeters. So you'd be starting at your origin plane. Again, that's just your virtual workspace. And just noting that you're working up. 190, that totally says millimeters. <laughs> now, what you're going to end up doing here, though, is you're going to be creating more planes to work from throughout this. So the first one is at about, uh, um, sorry, is about 25. Now, what I'm measuring to, 
there is that is just that hip there where they where this curve comes back in. But what we're going to find is we're going to actually need to, get, they need to add more in between that. But for now, we're just going to say, all right, that one's at 25. And we're going to create another plane, which is called a construction plane. And again, remember, these are just virtual planes. We're going to go on so on and so forth as we create uh, the bottle. Now, I prefer to create all of my plane. Oops, to create all of my planes first. Oh, that's getting wonky. And then add in my features. Now, as you do this, it's going to be very important, just for your own sanity's sake, as you're learning this pro as you're learning this process, work on the origin point. Build everything directly on the origin point. So meaning that if this bottle starts as a circle or rectangle or whatever, create it as a center point and build outward. So if that's an ovoid, create a center point, oval. Next one, if it's the same oval or whatever, if it's a circle, create a center point circle, that sort. It's going to help immensely. But... The reason we're making all these construction planes instead of like, well, what if I just make a bunch of a bunch of lines and drag these up to where they need to be? Yeah, that's totally possible. However, as we've learned with parametric modeling, if you create something referential in uh, CAD software, or at least specifically Fusion 360, you can then manipulate things much more easily without it becoming referential or rather without it causing problems down the line with other parts. So that way, meaning that if I have all my dimensions and realize, oh, you know what? I measured wrong. That should have been a 30 millimeter circle rather than a 28 millimeter circle or vice versa, whatever. If you already have it on this construction plane, you can manipulate that. Sure. Same way that you could if, it, if you had already moved all those uh uh, all those circles in place or whatever your profiles are. But say you realize that, oh, actually my dimension should have been should have been 26 millimeters up instead of 25 or whatever. You start moving things around vertically, it can very quickly and very easily throw off all of your measurements and such. Um, so I recommend building everything on construction planes. It works so much easier. All right. So that's the basics. Let's actually start doing some measurements and all of that. I'm going to switch back over to Fusion. Super duper. Now, first thing, save it. Sample. Loft bottle walkthrough. All right. So like I said, we're going to start first with um, making the bottle. Now, you will need multiple components for this. If you prefer to work by creating the components first, super, doesn't hurt. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Component one, and eh, we'll do lid or cap since it's more of a cap, sure. And then I'll go ahead and make another one. Whoops, I forgot to uncheck the box or reactivate the whole project. So make sure to do that so it doesn't accidentally nest your components. And there we go. What I was talking about, don't forget to deactivate or uncheck the activate box there. All right, so I got my cap, I got my bottle, super. Now for this, go ahead and activate the bottle component. Great. So first thing, you've got your main profile plane, which is the origin plane, that's fine. Next up, I'm gonna start measuring upwards. So like I said, that next one, 25 millimeters, all right. You go over to more to the right-hand area, there is a, on your toolbar, there is the default one construct offset plane. Now you open up the construct area, there's a whole bunch of these. Um, and we'll go along through that in a minute, but we're just gonna be using the offset plane. So how this works is you select the plane you're working from. What's going on here? It's not letting me, oh, there we go. That was strange, it wasn't looking right. You can either drag it up or type in 25. There we are. Um, now your original one does disappear. But if you go up here, back to the um, browser menu, if you unhide it, it'll stay It'll stay visible. Now, you can either work referentially, as in the next construction plane up, goes either measures from that first one. I would recommend 
don't. I would recommend continue to measure from the bottom up. That way, if you mix up in your, in your uh, vertical measurements, one to the next, it doesn't throw everything off. But if you do, that's all the more reason why I say it's best to build all of this stuff on construction planes. Oops, go on that side. So the next major one up is at 145, and that's just the hip of the next bottle. So I'm gonna make another construction plane, selecting the bottom, 145, oops, no, not 1,000. That's 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 so much more. <laughs> there we go. Much more reasonable. And it starts expanding. Now I'm going to open up the uh, or expand that component. You see that it's showing construction planes. Now it's going to number these sequentially. But if you find that you're going to end up adding more and more um, in between that, it'll get confusing real fast. You're going to want to go back through and relabel these just to make sure. So I'm going to measure up to the next point which is the base of the change here, which is 165. Remember, if you right-click, you can go to the uh, often use, it'll bring up the often use toolbar, and your uh, last use tool will be at the very top. So you can just keep selecting there. It's 165. Boop. Now, these are growing in size. That's not uh, or that has no uh, bearing on anything. It's merely a virtual virtual visual representation. Doesn't mean anything at the moment. All right. Next one is at the top of that, it was 195. And that was the one that I had measured earlier. So once again, right there, 195. Okay, so that at least gives me an idea of how big my bottle is going to be. Like I said, right now, I'm omitting the cap and everything because I'm going to create those as extruded cylinders. All right. Now, the trick comes when you're starting to add stuff in. And what I mean by that is we can make some of these profiles, but like I said, we can make like the bottom here, and we're not going to try to get the – we're you try to get it accurate, but on a lot of this stuff – I'd like you more of to just go through the experience of this. It's not so much a precision uh, representation, especially because, I don't know, maybe you don't have a square bottle on hand, so make something close to it. But most bottles like this, you can see, you can measure out the tallest one. Overall, this tallest one is just shy of 220 millimeters. This little one, this little hand pump bottle, omitting the pump, because I'm not expecting you all to make a hand pump, it's 130. So somewhere in that range, as long as you don't make like a teeny tiny thing. And ultimately, if you do, all right, we'll just scale it up. Not a problem. All right. So the most difficult thing comes in just trying to figure out, or at least at the beginning, trying to figure out how to make some of these profiles. Now, if you want to hide these and all that, that's fine. I would recommend that once you start creating stuff, hide them. So at the moment, I'm going to go ahead and just hide that part. And I'm going to start a sketch on that first plane. All right. So this is oval, but ovals can be really awkward to create. So it might actually be better to create this first as a rectangle and then nest an oval inside of that and try to like merge them together. We're going to see how it works. Ultimately, I'm just taking a cross reference or better yet, since it is kind of awkward to do, use your calipers if you got them and use that as dimensions. It's a lot easier to measure round objects that way. So side to side, it's 85.3. We're going to call it 85. So I'm going to create a center point rectangle. We'll say 85. Tab over to the next. And to there, it is yeah, 49. OK. Now that starts to create it. Now again, like I said, Ideally, this would be a curved surface, so you can most certainly do that in that um, you can try to measure out like, all right, how wide is that spot right there? The kind of sort of smallest point, it's about 20. So if I want, I can create like a sketch line from the center up, and that'd be like 10 millimeters. That's half a 20. All right, then I can use a fit point spline from that point. And just try to get it close to up to there. Eh, okay-ish. From that, and because, and 
the reason I'm going to go through the effort of doing this, at least these two parts, this bottom bottommost section is one and the same. I, I can go through the effort of creating this and then just make a copy of this. So, all right, this is all going to be symmetrical. How do I get around that? Let's use the mirror line. Um, now, to use the mirror tool, remember, you do have to have a line somewhere. So I'll, I'll make a line, make it a construction line. Doesn't matter. We're just making something across that I can use. Use the mirror tool. Select just that line. Now select my mirror line. Slaps it down there. Great. Oops. I accidentally hit um, escape instead of enter. There we go. Mirror line, my construction line. Great. Now I will want to trim this stuff and then blend it. So on this part, we'll trim out that box. Great. And we'll try to fill it that curve. Oops, not offset. Fill it that curvature just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. And it's going completely bonkers. <laughs> so maybe not. So this would be like where you definitely want to try to move that point around. And oh my God, I'm just making a mess of this. So this is why I was saying good enough is going to be good enough. All right. So let me trim this section out. And then we'll mirror this over. Good Lord, making a god awful mess of this design. Still need another construction line. So I'll just create one across the Y axis. Oops, I wanted a construction line, not a line. Great. So now I'm going to use that mirror tool. Boop, boop, boop. Grab those, enter, use my mirror line. Yeah. Oh, must have accidentally selected the mirror line as one of my lines. Oops, a daisy. There we go. Okay. Just to make that little profile. Gonna trim some chunks away. Goody gum drops. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting error messages because I uh, messed up the constraints because I was gonna do that intentionally. All right, great. Now I could take that line or this set of lines and create a new sketch. So Definitely label your sketches. So sketch one, bottom. Just trying to say bottom and wrote bottle of them. There we go, bottom. Unhide that first sketch or the first construction plane. And I can create a new sketch. But let's uh, go back into the first one because I forgot to copy that. So that first sketch, select all the things. Just control or command C, copy. Finish sketch. All right. Now I've got my next construction plane set floating there. Create a new sketch. Oh, it must have already had that going. There we are. On that construction plane. No, it's doing something screwy on me. Let's delete that. Oh, all right. So one problem I have had I've had is if you if it keeps trying to create new sketches on the same plane. Make sure to pre-select that uh, your next construction plane, then at select sketch. See now it's actually creating. If you uh, cycle up, you can see or orbit up. You can see that my virtual work plane is hovering above that first sketch. So now I can just control V or sorry, uh, control V, paste. There we go, and I can work from there. All right. So you'll go so on and so forth. Keep building up. The next one's going to be a lot easier because it actually is an oval shape. But what you'll find is anytime you need to go from um, one area to the next, sometimes you'll have to add in, uh, more construction planes because even though I'm making like the bottom there that's more or less kind of straight there, and obviously, yeah, it folds around. If I'm trying to create these curves for the bottom and top, That's going to be need, need to be a construction plane. That's going to be a, need to be a construction plane sketch. But also, so are these. So you're actually going to find you might need to add more in. So once again, that's why I say don't um, forget to label things and definitely take your time when it comes to creating the loft and such. This seems very unnecessarily 
tedious, but it's merely because we're learning a new way of working with this and you're having to make a series of sketches that will then come together and make the bottle. So essentially we'll build this and we'll come back. So I'm gonna work on building this up and we'll come back to it. Okay, so what I did is I went ahead and added in, you know, I added in those little bit more, uh, two more construction planes between what my two collar, basically the two collars would be this pronounced section here, this pronounced section up here. And I, and those uh, two other construction planes I added in, that's where I made the lip, the bottom lip for this intersection here, which is much more ovoid, where these tops and bottom pieces are a little bit more rectangular, at least in the flat ends of their ovoid section. The last piece I want to do is add a circle to the very top, which will be where that um, where the base of my uh, cap begins. So remember, if you are, and if you can, you can copy and paste your sketches. Don't forget, you have to have your sketch active, so in edit mode, to copy. Go back in. Edit sketch, select the whole thing, pardon me, then control or command C, copy, finish sketch, go to the one you want to work on, or if you're starting a new sketch then, then control V or command V if you're on Mac, drop it in, finish sketch, and it'll appear. You have to make sure also to do a selection box around the whole thing. Don't just try to select just the, box, or just the inside, something like that. Basically, what that translates as is it's you are trying your fusion is understanding it as you are selecting the negative space, the internal constrained space within those points, those lines. You actually need the lines and points themselves. So that's why you want to do a selection box around everything. All right. So that last bit there. And looking at my bottle, I do have this kind of little collar here, and then it goes a little bit smaller, actually. So I'm going to make sure to actually measure with my calipers the outside of that little ring 30 millimeters cool that works it's actually like 30.7 but like i said we're going to kind of fudge them to easier to understand whole numbers so that last construction plane add sketch all right center point circle this time right there 30 millimeters boom done all right so as i rotate to the front you can kind of see a very rough understanding of where i'm going with all of this let me hide those construction planes. You can see between the sketches how um, there starts to, you can kind of envision a line between them. All right, so let's save there. Sketch profiles made. All right, so the next step is adding the loft. So we go over to drop down, create, go to loft. Where is, I always lose it, right in front of my face. Now, how you work a loft tool, you have to select sequentially, meaning you can either start at the bottom or the top, but you have to select your sketches in descending or ascending uh, manner. You can't just go and select, like, you know, do a selection box around, errors out the wazoo. Do not do that. You actually have to select these individually. Yeah. I might as well just cancel out of this. This has gone bananas on me. All right. So let's repeat that loft. And I'll start, in this case, I'm going to start at the top. All right. Profile one, top. Next profile. Now it's, oop, what happened? Oh, I accidentally selected the point, not the circle. There we go. I want the actual profile. There we go. Next one. Now between two, like with a... Um, Fit points blind between two points is a straight line. It's not until the next profile, until three, you're going to start to get curves. But you can see immediately how that circle starts to translate to that kind of rectangular ovoid shape. Cool. Now select the next one. Now you're going to start to get these weird bulbous shapes. And this is where things start getting kind of weird, problematic even. Select the next one down. More so. All right. So this is where. When you start finding out, you know what? I might need to leave just this top piece as a single loft. So we'll see. Let's see what happens when I keep going. Down to the next one. 
it's getting weird and um, very problematic now because uh, my bottle definitely isn't like chopped apart in the middle. Keep going, keep going. Blorp. So uh, yeah, that's not exactly an accurate rep representation of what my model is, I would say. Definitely problematic. So you've got a few things you can play with. Um, we're not playing with rails right now. That's That'll be how we had handle the handles sorry how i create the handles uh you can use different edges edge types tangent and smooth edges um i'm not going to bother with that closed is something else entirely and oh god definitely bad geometry there um you can mess with the chain selection these are really toggles that aren't going to really have much bearing on what we're doing here so what i'm finding is for this bottle for this comp more complex even though it's a pretty simple shape it's the outline that's giving us problems. So I'm going to cancel out of this. And I realize I'm going to have to create this from multiple lofts. So let's start with a new one. And this time I'm going to start from the bottom. So select that bottom profile. Next one up. Next one up. All right. Now, it definitely got a little more bulbous than I would like. Um, you do have an option. Where is the tight option? Uh, da, 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 analysis, nope. nope. All right. Um, oh, right. Something else I'm thinking of. Never mind. So we're just going to use that for now. Okay. So that's kind of sort of the profile we're working with. I might need to work a different way. Let's try it just for, just for grins. Let's see what happens when I go the opposite direction. Yeah, pretty much the same. Yeah, that's unfortunate. All right, so we'll just go ahead and say okay. Now, remember, it's going to hide your sketches, so you're going to need to unhide stuff again if you need them still. All right, another loft, and we'll keep keep go, uh, working our way up. Straight up, there we go. Now, like before, like with like your, your extrudes and all this stuff, you have operations at the bottom. I can leave it as join. Okay, it's going to automatically connect. So now I do have a bit more of an accurate representation, but it's not working as well as I want. Repeat loft again. Let's keep going. From there, up to the next, up to the next. Bit better. Now, as I learned, go up to the very top, and it really creates a weird bulbous shape. So I don't want that. Let those join. Create one more loft. Now I'm just going to go from there to there. Straight shape. That'll work. Okay, join. So this isn't going to be the most accurate representation, and there's more things we could fiddle with. Mainly, one of the things that's really giving trouble is the proximity of some of these two sketch planes. Now, that would be definitely where I say, all right, let me identify where those sketch planes are. And that's where I could start to play around. So I'm not having to alter the sketches themselves. I can just move the plane itself, figure out which one it is. And then I can edit that plane, move it up and down. Now, everything disappears because that edit is before we created anything. Let it recalculate. A little bit better. Not really. Control Z kind of blorps out a little bit. That's all right. Like I said, we're not going for absolute accuracy with this. We're trying to get close. And you're going to kind of uh, fudge around with how the uh, loft works. All right. Super good. We've created all of those. Let's hide all construction planes. Now I want to create the cap or the tip here, and then we'll make the cap. All right. So, like I said, for the thread section, this is going to be a straight th uh, is a straight threads work on straight extrusion. So, I'm going to measure with my calipers. That section is actually 25 millimeters. So, I'm going to create a new sketch. I don't have to create any more construction planes at the moment. I can actually select on top of that face. So select the top of that face, center, 25 millimeters. Good. All right. Finish sketch. Now, how tall is that last little segment? Uh, we'll call it that 18. Now we'll do an extrude, select that last bit, go up 18. Boop. There we go. So now I've just got that little section there. All right. I'll save that. Bottle, lots, join. All right. Now, this part, you might have to figure out a couple of different ways to try. Because the next two steps 
are adding threads and hollowing out the body using the shell tool. Now, first I could go to thread, which is right below the hole tool, thread. Now, I'm, at the moment, I'm gonna, not going to mess with any of the settings here because the settings allow you to select different thread types. And in this case, especially because we're not even worrying about these, these objects clipping through one another, I'm just going to leave it as the default settings because when I select the surface to create threads on, which in this case is that extruded cylinder, it's going to automatically create a set of threads. And because we're working in metric, it's going to be M25. It's 25 millimeter uh, cylinder is going to create M25 threads, which are threads cut into a 25 millimeter surface. Now, as I zoom in, you can see this kind of faint look of like, it looks like there's threads, but there's nothing there. It's not pointed. This is to save computing space or computing power in your computer. It will register as threaded. If I took this object and 3D printed it, it will print the threads. However, I don't have to show them and bog down the computer. If you find that your computer can run this, great. If not, leave it as such. If you want to try this, the first checkbox on the toolbox is modeled. I select modeled. Now it shows the full set of threads. We're good. Now you can play around with this. There's the other setting like full length. You can actually create this as a partial, which actually is like this is. But one quick thing is obviously, the threads on this bottle are not M25 threads. These are like most bottles, like mason jars, like ball jars, stuff like that. It's actually a proprietary thread size. So even if you try to automatically model that, it wouldn't work. You'd actually have to try to like calculate the thread size it is. This isn't very difficult. It's only a coil with looks like 1.1 passes, but we're not going to mess with that right now. Let's just use the default settings. Call it good. All right. So if you want to leave that model to great, if not, that's fine. This works. Okay. And you can even let it remember thread size, but we're going to use the same diameters, so it won't matter. It'll automatically create the stuff. All right. Select OK. I've created the threads. Bam. Done. Super. Next step would be use the shell tool. Now, this might cause problems, and I'll show you why. How the shell tool works is you, create, you select one face that will be the opening and it will hollow out the form depending on that. Now, if you have too complex of a form, too many sharp turns, because this works on the same kind of geometry uh, or the same calculations as the offset line tool, you saw what happened when we tried to pull that offset line too far away from the, orig uh, the originating line. It really warped it. Same kind of thing can happen here. So let's just see. Let me select the top. And thickness, we'll use the kind of the same kind of thickness as we were using before. Two or three millimeters ought to do it. Let's say two for now. All right, it worked. But you can look inside. You can see down inside. All right, it's a hollow shape. Awesome. However, this has interfered with the threads. Look at how that actually goes. The thread wall is super thin. So what you might find you need to do is rearrange the order of these operations. So I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to move the history slider before I made the threads. Now do the shell operation. Would I say three millimeters? No, let's do it two. Mm, let's say three. That works better. A little bit thicker. Okay. Now go to current, recalculate, does not cut through. So you might find that you have to flip the order of those operations. Not saying it's always going to be that case. If you run into trouble, that's the easiest way to do it. All right, cool. That's the bottle. All right. Let me hide all those sketches because that's getting kind of bogged down. That's a basic bottle. Kind of wonky, but there we are. Save again. Oops. Grids and shell. Cool. <laughs> That's the bottle. That's pretty much it. Next step is I need to create the cap. Now, this we based off of sketches, all of this. The cap is just a cylinder, and you can do exactly that if you want. You can base it off of sketches, same process, or don't. What I mean by that is let me activate the cap tool or the cap, pro uh, blah, 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 cap component. 
There we are. You get a course create sketches, all of that. Or let's just go to create cylinder, basic cylinder. I can select right on top of where the top of my bottle is. Select there, right in the center. Now, you do need to make sure that it is larger than the thread size. So, bottle cap here is 30 millimeters. Great, because the threads we just made were 25. That leaves us plenty. Let's say 30. All right. And the cap size is <laughs> cap size 20 millimeters. All right. That's floating above. That's okay. Not a problem. All right. Now, you, the only problem with doing this this way is the next step is I need to hollow this out. I can use the shell tool, select there, but in order to get to 25 millimeters thickness, I'm going to need to do a little math. Yeah. And let's see here. I need the internal diameter to be 25 millimeters. It's 25 mil, or it, sorry, I need the internal diameter 25. The outside is 30. You would say, oh, it's five millimeters. No, if I make a five millimeter wall, that's going to make it tiny. I need half of that. That's 2.5. It's not that big, big deal. Is that 2.5? Yeah, five. Yeah, there we are. Okay. If you need to double check, go to inspect, select inside that circle. It'll show you there. Should show my, okay, it's showing area, loop length, blah, 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 blah. All right, that's irritating. And select that little circle. There we are. Diameter 25 millimeters. Yes, I can subtract. Hooray. All right, that that that's basically it. That's the cap. All right, so let's create uh, the threads on the inside. Now I select the inside the inside of the um, cylinder. It's going to automatically create my twenty five uh, M twenty five threads. I can go to modeled, showing me that excellent. And there we go. Now I could have also done like a sketch on the bottom, drawn a um, a uh, a circle at twenty five millimeters, extrude cut into the body and then done like an offset off the top. But again, let the, pro let the pro program do the work for you. There you go. All right. Now that is essentially the finish point. Now, I said I wanted to show you all how to do a couple of little detail things here, and I do. So in this case, I'm going to model these little threads, kind of, sort of, or not threads, this little traction bit. Now you can take this however you want, meaning like you can model features, stuff like that, that's fine. Easy way to do something like this is I'm going to create a sketch on the top of that bottle cap. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little circle right at the edge. And we'll call, we'll say one millimeter. All right. That, that's it. <laughs> All right. Now, like we did for like the um, planter vessel, we're going to extrude this down. Select there. Now, I can, of course, do this either by hand. It's going to cut in. I can select extent type to object and select just the bottom rung there. It's going to cut all the way through. Or this thing actually has this teeny little lip that we can play with. So actually, let's do instead, yeah, all, and then an offset of, let's say, one millimeter. That one, negative one. It backs off a little bit. That That's all. That's all it did. Okay, so it's just that little tiny feature there. Now I'm going to use, and let me close, let me hide the bottle so we can uh, uh, save ourselves a little bit. Circle pattern, go to faces, select that face, or actually better yet, I should be selecting features. There we go. So if I was selecting faces, I need to make sure to select both that half tube and the bottom, but by features, it's that whole feature. There we are. Now my axis. Because I created this all the way up top above my origin point, I have to zoom way out to get to my origin point. So let's select the Z, go back up. All right. So that's going to create three. I need a lot, lot, lot more. So let's try 30. Getting close. Let's try 60. Better. Actually, 70. That's pretty good for me. All right, that actually works pretty nicely. Let's say, okay, it's going to cut all of those and bam, created a pretty simple way of making a kind of ridged cap. Now I could do that more accurately, yada, yada, yada. There's all kinds of fun stuff you could do, but that works pretty well. Um, that'll work. You can, of course, add a fillet in there if you want. 
You can really complicate the heck out of this thing. Now, of course, selecting stuff gets awkward because it's trying to select all the little features there. And oh my God. Yeah, it gets this is one of the problems with uh, Fusion. So I'm trying to select stuff and it keeps trying to get everything else. I don't know. Let's see what happens when I put a one millimeter fillet on this. I just completely fry out the program. Yeah, warnings all around. This is why it's important to save before you make an operation that's going to do a whole bunch of calculating. All right, wouldn't let me do it. That's fine. We'll avoid that. Don't do that. Okay, save. Cap, done. Cool. All right. Unhide the bottle. Reactivate the whole project. All right. Now I need to add a, let me hit F6 to resize. Now I need to add my joint in. So I go up to a symbol above, joint. We'll do simple. Now the trick is you can't get inside to select everything. So remember the uh, remember how this works. Your first selection is what will move. Your second selection is to where it will move or where it will move to. There we are. So I need to select the cap first and then its placement on the bottle. So I'm going to hide the bottle. I actually want to select up inside of the cap, the center in there. There we are. Snaps to the center. Now, don't forget, uh, or rather, you have two options here, and it's, this can throw you off. Make sure you select the X. Don't select the square. The square is the current center, or the center of the current level of the threads. Should have turned that compressor off. The X is the center of the cylinder. It's confusing, but that's what that means. All right, select there. That ghosts out. Unhide the bottle. Now, again, if you have trouble selecting everything, just hide the cap for now. I need to select here in the center. Sometimes it gets awkward. This is actually working pretty well. But again, if you can't, if it's giving you trouble in selecting, mouse over the top of this ridge here, press and hold control, and it will snap and it will lock your selection to the top here. But my center of that trying or that center of the thread and the center of the cylinder are very close right now. So I'm going to use, I'm not going to press and hold control because I get, I can, you can see very close. If you look very close, you can see it snapping back and forth. So if I let go, now there's only one point because it's inside that cylinder. That's what I want. Select there. Now, of course, nothing happens because cap was hidden, but it moved down. All right. It did move down, snaps in place, great. I don't mind that little ridge. But we want to change the motion. So switch over tabs from rigid, because again, rigid is like the two things that are glued together, and it just shakes and it, it just gives me anxiety. I, I hate that thing. <laughs> what we want is the cylindrical. So it rotates and moves up and down. Don't worry that it clips back and forth right now. That's okay, we'll fix that later. Select okay. All right, go expand the joints now. Open up the uh, controls. Now you have your edit motions. Now, because this is a two motion joint, you're going to have two tabs. The rotate just rotates. Tab over to the slider, slides. The rotate, that's fine. Let it go. Slider, we obviously want to set some limits on. All right. Now you need to like, just stop moving, damn it. There you go. Okay, so we're at rest. Now I can use either, I can put in a numeric input. So let's say, I don't know, 50 millimeters goes way on up there, but then we have a maximum minimum. So this kind of throws everything out of the out of whack. I prefer to instead use the arrows. So right, where'd they go? Okay, let's zero all of this stuff out. Yeah, it. There we are. All right. So now it moved up 50. That's fine. If you need to move it up more, I don't know, 75, 720. That's too much. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit out of the way. That's fine. Okay. Great. That, that's it. That's all you really need. But a couple of things. Don't forget, you have to ground the unmoving objects. So the bottle, right click on the bottle, second option down, ground. 
Now, when I click and drag the cap, you can rotate and move it up and down. The bottle will not move with it. If you leave it up in space, your capture position and revert position options pop up at the top right hand of the toolbar. Those are either in its new position, you can leave it there, or if you want it to go back, revert or control Z. Well, okay. Save that. Joint added. All right. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Last up here is I want you to add a handle to this, even if your object doesn't have a handle, because I want you to see just how similar tools work differently. And this is going to apply directly to the next project. So you can add some simple handle if you want. doesn't really matter. What we're going to do, I'm going to make sure to activate the bottle component. I want to create a sketch that is on the, um, in this case, the X, Z axis. So it's going to be in profile. I don't know why it snaps all the way down there. And I'm just going to use a fit point spline somewhere on the edge here and draw what might be a fancy bottle. Perfect for drinking whatever noxious fluid is inside this bottle. <laughs> don't do that. All right, finish sketch. Where did my thing go? Oh, I have all the sketches hidden. There we are. So like I said, then let me hide the body for this, which will be bottle. Go ahead and label that while I'm at it. All right. Oh, God, all those other sketches. Let's make sure to label that one also. Handle. Uh, handle rail. There we are. Okay. <clears throat> if you want to use the pipe tool, which actually is one of the defa default ones up here, select pipe, select that path, and you can determine how wide the handle is. Make it obscenely large. <laughs> so much bigger than the bottle is. Now, one of the things you're gonna note here, and the reason I'm just check, uh, just grab this one first, is you're gonna see how the placement gets problematic. You're gonna see, obviously it's gonna to default to cutting and that's all right. We're gonna, we're gonna actually probably just use new body, but you can see how it clips in, but it's not complete. This is where either the uh, pipe tool falls a little short or your placement gets problematic of the line. Now you can extend some line stuff like that, but let's go ahead and cancel this for now. And let's go back to the sketch. So I want to edit sketch, but I want to unhide the bottle body. Because what I want to do is I want to borrow the edge line of the bottle so I can have that as a reference. And the reason that's really important is on things like, yeah, it makes sense. Um, I have a strong line right here because that's where the uh, at the top of the bottle, because that's where the edge of the bottle is. Fine. But what about these curved surfaces? There's no actual line to work off of. So what you can do is you can either just press P or open up uh, the drop, the create drop down, go down to project. What this is, is it will project a line by silhouette uh, of bodies and geometries like that. What I can do is I can select either just that edge or the whole thing. In this case, we're just going to select just these edges. But if I zoom in, excuse me, as I zoom in, you can see it's not actually selecting the full edge. So I'm going to keep selecting just bodies, parts, just body parts, whatever. Or you can select all the things. Just keep going. doesn't really matter in this case, but you can just select just those edges. Select OK. You see these purple lines. Let me hide the bottle. Oh, it didn't leave my uh, center. Well, that's problematic. Why did it not? Huh. Repeat. Oh, the selection filter there. All right. I see what I did. Let me control Z that. I was selecting on edges. Let me repeat the project. Selection filter, not on edge. Instead, if you have curved surfaces and you want to actually use those as reference lines, reference lines, sorry, select your selection filter to bodies. Now it'll select the whole thing. Select OK. Hide that. Now I have an active line I can work with. Now, the importance of this is what I'm going to actually have to do is move my handle profile past just the edge of the body. So I'm going to grab that point and just drag it inward. How much? I'm not sure yet. 
Going to keep dragging that inward. Okay, there we go. It's a bit more. Unhide the bottle. Yeah, that's closed line, but that's all right. We don't need that. Doesn't really matter. Now, when I select the pipe tool, it's doing weird stuff again. What's going on here? Oh, I just need a profile distance. Oh, uh, let's say five. What is happening here? Just that path. There we are. There we are. I don't know what it did. That was weird. New body. But now, as I zoom in, you can see that it does, in fact, clip right inside. Great. Now, the problem with this, of course, is going to be that if I look down inside, you can probably see. Eh, it's hard to see. But I'll tell you what, let me change my visual style. And with hidden edges, and you can see that it actually would interfere inside the bottle. So what we could do about that is we can trim this and then join. But you can see I didn't actually move that far enough in. So I'll probably need to go back and adjust that profile edge a little bit more, stuff like that. Now, that's in using a pipe. So let's just use that as new body. There we go. And we'll say pipe handle. If I wanted to use more of a loft or a sweep, which are very similar, but you create your own profile, let's hide the bottle, hide the pipe. I will need a new profile. However, I need it perpendicular to that profile line. So let's create a new profile or a new sketch. I'm sorry. But how do I get it on the edge of that line? I actually need it on the edge there. All right. So in this case, Let's cancel out. We'll go to construction and we can actually put a plane along a path. Select there, my path. And now you can see it just, it's kind of, it's very light to see, but it plops a plane perpendicular to its current position on the path. And what I mean by current position is I can move it at any distance down the length of this path. You can do this numerically also with distance. It goes from zero to one. Zero is one side, one is the other. Anything in between is in between. In this case, zero. I want it right there. Select OK. You're creating not visible. Why is it not visible? Oh, because I have the construction lines hidden. OK. Or construction planes, rather. Oof, this is where it gets confusing. Select that. Ah, there we are. OK, let's say... Uh, path plane. Okay, so I can hide stuff that I don't need. All right, there we go. Cool. That's what I needed. Now I can create a sketch on that plane. Oh God, why did it do that? I don't know why it flips around like that sometimes. Trick is, wait, where am I working? <laughs> there we go. I'm on that that point right there at the origin. Okay, cool. So I'm working directly on the origin. So in this case, if I wanted to create, I don't know, an oval, I don't know, we'll go out, 20 seems excessive, 16 and up a little bit, eight, sure. You can keep playing with this, you can modify this, you, this can be an amorphous blob handle, doesn't matter. Select OK. All right. Now I can go to create, and instead I can select one of the other ones, in this case, sweep. Because a sweep is kind of like a, it's kind of like a loft, only it's only one profile. Select my profile, that oval or ellipse, select my path, and now it creates my handle based on that path. So it's the same thing as the pipe, only you can make your own profile. I'm going to leave it as operation new body because I don't want, know which one I want yet. You do the exact same thing. If you want to create one last one, let's say sweep handle. Only you'll need to make, uh, you can make it with a loft. You'll just need to make one more construction line. Again, go down to plane along a path, select the same path. And this time we need it all the way at the other end. So let's say one. So it goes all the way to the other end. There we are. And you can see it's, up, it's at a weird angle, but that's okay because it's perpendicular to that path line. Let's go to there. I don't know why it does that. But remember, you are working directly off of the origin because that is the origin for your uh, construction plane. So let's say, I don't know, make it uh, rectangular. Oops, 
I got just slightly off the center. Oop. And I don't know, originally it was, I don't know, five by uh, 10. There we go. Okay, finished sketch. Zoom back out, try to figure, try to figure out what I'm doing here. There we go. I have my two profiles now. Now I can go back, loft. I select my two profiles, the oval, and the next one is the rectangle. Now, right now, it's going to draw a horrible, horrible line. Oh, it actually isn't too terrible. Directly between those. You have to select a rail also. So the selection box down below, the selection area here, there's an arrow point, an arrow key next to rails. That's what that path is, that rail, that path. Go to that, select that path line. Does not touch all the profiles. Yeah, it does. It's literally on the profile. How can it not touch all the profiles? It is objectively on the profile. Ah, there we go. Fine. Usually it'll work, but if you do get that error, double check above the guide type where it says and just select center line because you can create additional lines. Don't worry about it. So if you get that error, just switch over to center line. And there you go. Now I have a lofted handle. So really that's just if you want whatever selection. Right. So you make your selection of what you want, what kind of handle you want, doesn't matter. You could even create a little donut handle if you want. We'll use a toroid or here, hang on. Don't want to create a toroid. I don't want to throw too much geometry at y'all right now. Um, Get another profile. Or, well, I'll create another uh, sketch just on, again, the same plane. In this case, nope, not a center point. Let's create a circle, uh, two-point circle somewhere inside, and then draw it out. I don't know. Sure. 40 millimeters. Great. Finish sketch. And then I could go to pat pipe. Select that pipe path. I want a new body. And I don't know. Let's make it five. Not 500. Why? Why do you keep doing that? Yes. Ugh. Really kind of drive me crazy with that. New body. Please give me my selection now. There we go. Make it a big old donut handle. Whatever. Last step would just be joining them. So whatever you want to end up using, doesn't matter. Go to combine, target body, and then the tool body. Select OK. Now they're one. Now, the only problem with that is going to be is, and I'll show you this. Uh, we're going to talk about how to use this tool later. But um, let's go to section analysis. What this will do, uh, a section analysis tool, we'll talk about it later more, but it just cuts your object in half so you can see a cross section. So the issue, or you, know, you can actually set the uh, depth to whatever you want. It's really, it's just a really convenient tool for um, doing exactly that if you're not sure what the thing actually looks like on the inside. And this doesn't have any impact on the actual model. If I selected this and went straight to print, it would print the entire object. It wouldn't print a, a, you know, a half a thing. But the reason I'm showing you this is so you can see like, okay, well, what about if it's you know in between here? All right, if it's sticking in, something like that, and I don't want that to happen. What you can do is when you go to combine, you'll have to do instead of just straight combine, let's back, oops, I just want to, uh, delete my that last combine there. So now they're different bodies. I go to combine, target body, and we'll say tool body there. But in <clears throat> excuse me, the operation I want to do is actually cut. No, I mixed those up. Target body is the original. Use the tool body as the bottle. See, so it'll chop it up. See, what'll happen is it'll chop it up. But what you can do is just select Keep Tools. Now you'll end up with these weird little chunks. But 
you can either delete them or hide them. Now I could go and combine them and you won't have the that interruption. So that's all. A um, little bit of a jumble there, but in all reality, as long as it's not over, over uh, overlapping too bad, you can just go straight to combine. Uh, that's an additional step you can most certainly take. Um, to get out of section analysis, uh, go up to the uh, browser bar up here at the top. It says analysis. And just hide it. That's all. It's so, okay. Unhide all the things. Last step would be shifting over, add some appearances. And let's see here. Ooh, shiny mirror. Sure. Let's make it a mirror bottle. And um, stone. No, wood. Fancy walnut handle. Oops, I accidentally grabbed the wrong one. Why isn't it showing? I want my weird walnut hand, uh, cap. I don't know why it's not doing that. That's weird. Oh, must be my uh, view setting. No? Huh. wonder why that's ghosted out. That's strange. Do I have something hidden? Oh, because I still have the bottle active. Dang it. There it is. Okay. Now when you can't remember what you're doing. All right. Let's drop all this stuff together. Hide the construction sketches, all of that fun. Right now, um, if I'm going to go with my donut handle, I just hide the other one. Oops. Make sure they're joined together, all that such. So there you go. That is how to make a lofted bottle, how to hollow it out, some sort of handle. However, whatever one you want to do, fancy handle, cap that opens. And there you go. So very simple tools. It's just kind of a complex way of using it. But there's a couple of different ways of using loft and a few other things that will also apply later. So all done. And save. Great. Make sure it saves. All right, good luck.